five, four, three, two, three, two, one. Okay, thank you all for attending and welcome to the February 15th, 2022 meeting of the Rules, Confirmations, and Public Elections Committee. Um, we do have a quorum. Uh, I'll just go through the roll briefly. Uh, let's see here. Councilmember Syracuse is here. Councilmember Johnson is here. Councilmember uh, Rutherford is here. Councilmember Evans is here. Councilmember Rosenberg and myself. That's six. All right. Do you mind shutting that door so we can make sure to kind of thank you, Councilmember Hancock? So we're gonna we're gonna follow the agenda as written. If anyone has one, uh, so. We'll begin with resolutions uh, on consent. So I'll go down uh, this consent agenda, and anybody that uh, does wants anything pulled from consent, uh, just let me know. Uh, resolution 2022-1392, uh, honors the life of former Davidson County General Sessions and Circuit Court Judge Barbara Jean Norman Hayes. Uh, resolution 2022-1393, honors the life of Queen Mother Catherine Hayes Carr. Resolution 2022-1394, urges the Tennessee General Assembly to support the Colonel Thomas G. Bowden Act uh, to establish respite care program for caregivers of individuals with Alzheimer's and related dementia in Tennessee. Uh, RS 2022-1395, supports the establishment of a Fisk University Business Incubation and Innovation Center and in support of establishing a steering committee to guide its development and solicit community input. So that's our resolutions on consent. Uh, anyone like anything pulled from consent? All right, the motion to approve the consent to dinner. Well, I, I, I know I'm not on the committee. Thank you, Chair, for recognizing me. But I did want to recognize that uh, Mr. Dale Freeman who is um, the person who offered his services on that Nashville Business Incubation and Innovative Center is here with us. And um, Why don't we pull it off consent and we'll talk about it. Okay. Okay. I'll well, make that easy. All right. Um, on the other three, anybody want to pull anything off there? Okay. Uh, then, I'll move uh, the consent agenda. Second. Moving properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? <coughs> All right, consent agenda is approved. All right, RS 2022-1395 supports the establishment of a Fisk University Business Incubation and Innovation Center and in support of establishing a steering committee to guide its development and solicit community input. Do I have a motion? Second. All right, moving properly seconded. Discussion. Thank you so much, Chair. I certainly appreciate the opportunity for me to share with the committee how important this is. The community has spoken and indicated that they needed support for small businesses in the North Nashville community. And it's been long overdue for us to support the jewel of the institution, Fisk University. And I think this is a wonderful opportunity. And as I started to say, Mr. Darrell Freeman, offered his services uh, to Fisk. Now, this is a well-established um, entrepreneur. He has uh, is the founder of Zycron Computers, and he has sold that business for a gazillion dollars. <laughs> 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 and he is and, and he was fresh out of college that's the, that's the thing but he also was in the Nashville Business Incubation Center he's a strong investor behind Slim and Huskies he has supported numerous of small businesses and nonprofit organizations in the community. And there's no one, I think, better than the one to lead this. He serves on as a trustee on uh, university boards of trustees and just done a plethora of things. And I just wanted to recognize him and thank him for being here uh, as we push this forward. Is there anything you'd like to say, Mr. Freeman? Uh, First of all, I want to say thank you for the opportunity to work with Metro. I came to Nashville broke. <laughs> I was in the Nashville Business Incubation Center. I understand what the needs of the North Nashville community is. 
my business was located there, I still own property there, still have a lot of friends there, investing in Stimmon Huskies, investing on Jefferson Street, but I think this project is a unique one that can help change the face of Nashville, that can help small businesses in North Nashville grow and develop, so that one day they can sell their companies for a gazillion dollars, it actually turned out to be 23 million. <laughs> But they can, they can grow their businesses and also to have Fisk be a part of that whole process of bringing the community together and Metro investing in Fisk and also having services from Metro provided to that area so people can walk to that location versus having to drive downtown to the Metro Center. So I think overall this is a win-win-win for the Nashville community and I think it's going to help set Nashville apart from other cities our size. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry to interrupt. We had also invited Fisk University's uh, Executive Director, Mr. Jens Fredrickson here, who's with us here as well, if you wanted to hear from him. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm happy to echo that sentiment. Thank you for letting me speak up. I think uh, these are exciting times at Fisk, and what the appetite among students uh, and, and all the institutions in that area, particularly among students, is for more entrepreneurial experience. I think we see this reflected in the way that business entrepreneurship has grown as a major within the university and within other universities. And you're starting to see this sort of real life praxis, practical experience learning take on a far greater importance. It's been done very well elsewhere. Stanford, Northwestern are just examples of where this sort of hands-on, where students can get their first venture into launching a business and, and partner with members of the community with already established uh, venture capitalists, the resources that are required as you begin to launch this. Plenty of our students are launching businesses, and yet they don't have a real appreciation for sort of the, the difficulty of the first steps. And so having something like that in partnership with the community on the campus with the kind of resources like Mr. Freeman brings to bear, I just think will transform not only the student experience for all of the universities in that area, but for all of these emerging small businesses. And I think from an economic development and an innovation standpoint, it's it's really pretty exciting. So thank you. And I apologize, Dr. Fredrickson, being that I didn't, uh, we weren't on Fence campus, I just thought you were a GQ model that I saw. <laughs> 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 you know, I was flattered that you looked at me. I thought you went. <laughs> now you're really going to make me blush over here. Excuse me, the camera's yeah, right. on. <laughs> we need to get you Any other discussion? <laughs> Any other discussion on this? All right, the moon properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, resolution passes. Now we'll move on to late items. Um, we have a late item uh, from Councilmember Connell. Is he here? We'll move that to the heel of the agenda. We'll move to a late ordinance. Uh, Evans and Allen sponsors. Uh, it's an ordinance approving the contract between the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan National Police Department and the Mental Health Cooperative to ensure the provision integration and implementation of mental health training for Metro Police Department personnel by Mental Health Cooperative Clinical Personnel. Uh, now this would be a late filing to get it on first reading. Uh, Councilmember Evans, if you'd like to address the late nature of this bill. Thank you. Yes, it was late because we had the, uh, of course, appropriated the money. We did not have the contract um, in place and so it was late due to the contract. Um, process with MNPD and the Mental Health Cooperative to be able to establish that relationship, which is new for them. Anybody, any questions for Councilman Ravens or anybody else? Okay. Uh, anybody object to uh, the filing of this late? All right. We'll move on. It's Councilmember O'Connell. He's on this way. Oh, he is? Okay. We'll just wait for a minute for him. Uh, yeah. Theoretically. Yeah, theoretically. <laughs> theoretically. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You don't see him? No. All right, we'll just kick him to the heel and we'll, uh, uh, we may interrupt the deal with it when he comes in. Okay. All right, we'll move to elections and confirmations. 
and uh, we're going to begin with the interview of Community Oversight Board nominees. Uh, so we will deal with an election to fill three vacancies for terms that expire January 31st, 2025. Two seats will be filled by community organization or petition, and one seat will be filled by council member nomination. So uh, to be clear, um, we have four people. All right, we're, I'm going to regress just a moment from here now that Council Member O'Connell has uh, arrived and we'll go back. So let me interrupt that process and move to uh, late items again. Uh, we have a late resolution from Council Member O'Connell, a resolution approving grant contract between Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County and Louisiana Home Buyer Education Collaborative Incorporated to provide homeless performance review and recommendation. And we're only, we just want to address the late nature of the filing. Uh, Councilman Morcom, the floor is yours. Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this one is procedural in nature. I think it got held up in legal review. This is a contract that you'll know, everybody on the committee should re remember. We approved $500,000 allocated to this study identified a vendor, want to keep the procurement moving so we can track with this year's budget cycle. So I would encourage uh, colleagues that support it. Uh, the administration knows about it. It's a good collaborative bill and we'd like to move forward. Okay. All right. Anybody uh, got any objection to the late file of nature of this? Yeah. Okay. Well, then, uh, thank you very much for this. I appreciate it very much. So let's go back to where we were. Um, again, the election is to fill three Vacancies for terms that expire January 31st, 2025. Two seats will be filled by community organization or petition, and one seat it will be filled by council member nomination. So we have four candidates before us, nominees, however we want to refer to them. Uh, three of these candidates will be uh, uh, vying for two seats that will be filled by community organization or petition. We only have one council member appointee, and uh, there's no one else to compete for that position. So on the floor, we will vote uh, uh, to fill those seats. This is our opportunity to interview the uh, candidates. There will be no interviews conducted on the floor, and I don't. Uh, and my understanding is there'll be no statements on behalf or against either of the nominees. So now is the time to do that. So uh, we will begin that process right now, and the, uh, uh, the first person on the agenda is Mr. Jamel Campbell-Gooch. How are you, sir? I know Jamel, and you don't mind me referring to you as Jamel, do you? No, I don't. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Uh, Jamel was nominated by the Black Nashville Assembly, uh, and I have just a couple of brief questions for you that we ask everybody. Are you a Davidson County resident? Yes, sir. Are you a registered voter in Davidson County? Yes, sir. Do you serve on any other metro boards or commissions? I do not. All right. Would you care to make a statement uh, before we begin our interview process? Um, yeah. I think I've learned I'm in a totally different place than what I was when I first walked in here. I think a lot of you all were in my initial uh, interview. And I've learned so much about how the city works, um, how things move around here. But also, I've learned so much about how we get forward, right? I think one thing that the Community Oversight Board presents is a way that we can actually, that we can start solving generational issues and generational harm that have taken place in Nashville. And I think if we are to move forward, I think it's going to come through something like a Community Oversight Board, which is democratically elected. And if you look at the people that are on the board, they come from all different walks of life. And... Um, they represent all different types of folks. So I just wanted to, it's been a, been a pleasure. Okay, thank you. All right, we will begin the process. Anyone uh, on the board have any questions you would like to ask of uh, Jamel? Yes. Uh, sir, in your, in your own words, how would you describe the role of the COB? What, what is its purpose for yeah. our city? Yeah, I think I think um, I think the COB is a way for community members to one be involved in the policing that is happening in their neighborhoods to explore curiosities. Right at the COB, you can if you're a community member, you can you can file a complaint, but you can also be curious about what's happening in your community. Right. So if it's 
something that you're seeing outside of your window every single day. We all know that that is policy in real time. Everybody don't really know that. So you can literally explore that curiosity with the community oversight board. And three, um, you can have an input, right? So we also do audits and we also provide recommendations. And most of those recommendations are, a lot of those are a direct reflection or a result of a direct communication with the community. So I think those three things embody the whole community oversight board. On top of what I said earlier, I think the community oversight board is a way that we can start rectifying historical harms um, that has happened in Nashville between police and community. And if I can give you one example, things like, you know, 37208 having like one of the highest incarceration rates, well, the highest incarceration rates for people born in the 80s, which I was born in the 80s. Um, I think that was a policy that happened, right? There was a policy decision that happened that created that environment, which I grew up in. So if we can provide both a place where that won't happen again and a place where we can bring community members along to make sure that don't happen again, I think it puts Nashville in a better place. Thank you. Now and in the future. Yes, Councilmember Evans. What do you um, think in, in the time that you've been on the board that's been the, the most positive change you've seen occur during your tenure? Can I give you two? Of course. Okay, I think the, mo mm -hmm. the uh, MOU with MNPD, I think that has been a really positive change because at the beginning of my tenure with the Community Oversight Board, the first year was pretty much stonewalling. We couldn't get anything done. We couldn't investigate. Most of you know that we have a backlog. Most of that backlog was caused by that stonewalling. Uh, walling. If people remember, uh, when we tried to get access to records, Chief Anderson was like, we're going to have to print off 5,000 pages. It's going to cost 1.2. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, it wasn't a lot of access there. So I think the MOU provided some transparency on how both bodies are supposed to function. And then I think, too, if I can be honest, I think the change in leadership of MNPD also helped a lot, too, because with Chief Drake, we got a lot more access We've actually been able to do investigations, and we've also been able to do audits, which is the two functions of the board. Mm -hmm. So I think those are the two. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. uh, I, I have a couple of questions for you, Jamil. Uh, on the application or questionnaire that you fill out, mm -hmm. On uh, question 45, it addresses objectivity, mm -hmm. and uh, the question was, can you be objective in your invest in, in the, your role on the community the oversight board with respect to issues involving the police department? Uh, when I look at some of the things that you put out on social media, uh, I want to get you to address some of those comments as it relates to your mm -hmm. ability to be objective towards the police department. Um, and. For example, I've seen posts that say you are supportive of abolishing the police mm -hmm. uh, and defunding the police and uh, things like this. I won't go into every one of them, but you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to ask you about that. And uh, uh, as guardians of uh, this process mm -hmm. and guardians and, and, and shepherds of the people who actually serve on our boards, mm -hmm. we have to make that decision, and, and our interest is uh, people serving on these boards in that objective capacity. So speak to that issue if you would. Well, I'll, I'll speak to, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to parse that out because I want to sure. answer that third. Answer in a hybrid way. I'll speak to my social media presence, um, and then I'll speak to, like, my politics. Okay. So I think my, my social media and even on my day-to-day -day conversations, most of the things that I try to do both online and in person is bring folks along in the democratic process. Um, what I did not expect my first time being in this board, uh, being here, is that so many people would not know about this process, right? They don't know that we have 40 plus city council members. They don't understand the at large thing. You know what I'm saying? So there's, so there's nuances there. So that's first. I try to use my social media as a way to bring along the democratic process and give informal touches to folks that both I do talk to in person and have no communication with, and also who might be intimidated by this process. And then two, um, I think my politics as an abolitionist have been born out of my being on this board. 
and in those early days coming in contact with the command staff of MMPD who clearly didn't want community oversight and having been railroaded at every single turn. Even to this point, we are, we're getting, we get, we get participation, right? because we have gotten a little bit more access, but there's still roadblocks to cooperation, which is what the board was originally meant for. I also think we have to think through how do we make whole communities in a way where police are irrelevant. You know what I'm saying? I think we need to be looking at how can we start working to build out communities that don't need police so that we also, one, don't continuously put police in bad positions because we are constantly growing what we think they should do and then two actually rectify the harm by removing some of the harm you see what i'm saying so i think those are the two things that i wanted to make sure i communicate one i use my social media as a uh, democratic process just to give informal touches to people who are intimidated by this process and then two my belief is that if we look at it like how can we solve these problems without police we actually get to a place where communities don't experience harm. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. I've got one other question relating mm -hmm. to question 45, which is objectivity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you spoke at the uh, budget hearing in favor of the Nashville's, uh, Nashville People's Budget Coalition. Yes, sir. And uh, their social media feed says that... Uh, uh, they desire to build a Nashville where public safety includes fully funded education, access to health care, and freedom from policing and jails. I know you've spoken on behalf of that, so I assume you support those values. Uh, so I know that they uh, put together a survey prior mm -hmm. to the uh, budget process. Mm -hmm. uh, do you believe the survey that they put out in uh, advance of this year's budget is fair and objective? What the People's Budget Coalition hasn't put out a survey for this budget cycle. No, I'm talking about last year's budget cycle. So there was two. So one, I want to say I'm not. The National People's Budget Coalition is a mix of a lot of groups. Right. So I I'm understand. I'm not the spokesperson for it, but I can talk to uh, my participation in a mm -hmm. sense. Um, I believe that we are. If you look at over the last ten years, our over our investment into police, which has almost quadrupled our investment into public housing, I think it builds out a framework of where we are, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. So in order to build a safe community, which has access to those resources like housing, like the things you mentioned, housing, fully funded education, a good paying job, grocery stores, sidewalks, which a lot of you talk about a lot, I think that there needs to be a transfer of resources. Right? Because there's a lot of things that are happening as far as on the ground with our dollars, where our tax dollars go, that a lot of our community members just don't understand. As you all know, that the budget is probably like 400 pages. I mean, there's a general operating budget. There's a CIB. There's so many different ways that the city gets money and revenue. And I think one thing that I do believe is I do believe that we have to start investing in those other public goods that create public safety and not just invest in police and rely on police and jails to actually keep our community safe. Okay. Yes, sir. Just a couple really quick questions. Do you feel it's the obligation of a board member to cuddle up to people in positions of power simply because they're in positions of power? No. And do you feel like the board benefits from members with a diversity of backgrounds and opinions and perspectives? Absolutely, because I think the more opinions and perspectives that are there, the more likely whatever is created is bought in by everyone. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Councilmember. Um, I guess just to follow up with both of the questions, so are you comfortable then, because I've noticed some things where I thought, I don't know him, we've never had a conversation, mm -hmm. would you be open to a conversation if I see something or any of us see anything that we go, hey, you don't fully understand maybe the information or maybe some of the context or the nuance like you were talking about before um, on some of the issues that maybe you're posting about or that, you know, come before you? Yeah, what I would suggest is that since the conversation is happening in a, in a public form, uh -huh. if the response is in a public form, you see yeah, what I'm saying? of course. That's always welcome. Like, I, like, yeah. uh, like the council member just said, I think a diversity of, of opinions, 
a diversity of perspectives. We ain't doing nothing but building on public consciousness. And I also want to mention here, I think the more the people know about this process, the situation, and the more that the, they are able to consume information that they then can learn and regurgitate, yeah. I think the better the governance of the city is because the electorate becomes smarter and more diverse. Yeah, so you don't, it sounds like to me you don't have a problem with feedback. Never. Okay. I mean, and I, and I also want to say, my day-to-day, -day, I work directly with community members. When you're on the door, when you're at an outreach event, you're going to get a mix of a little bit of everybody. And I think as a community organizer, I pride myself on being able to work with anyone, especially if they have a heart for the people and they're not associated with any ongoing harm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I have a yes, Council Member. Thank you so much, Chair. And I apologize to the committee members uh, for, for being a little tardy. My question is, as it go, goes back to uh, objectivity, uh, to that question on the questionnaire, some of your, um, your social media sentiments um, uh, could be construed as um, antagonistic towards our police department when you're on a board to bridge the relationship between the community in the police department. So if you can if you can speak to that, if there is any misconception, are you uh, 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 a hate the police uh, type of CLB type board member, uh, it would help this body to understand, uh, uh, just to understand your, your position. Because as, as a CLB member, with us confirming you, we're elected, so we have a different level of accountability to the general public. And with us confirming you on the board, now we're extending that same type of accountability and trust. So as, as council members, when we say this guy is good on the CLB board, this guy understands not just North Nashville, but he understands Bellevue, he understands West Nashville, he understands Southeast Nashville, and all that encompasses that public safety ecosystem, because it's not, it's not a one hat fits all, right? And, and we've had this conversation uh, before, not, not, not with you, but just, just as a body, where we're trying to, um, to, to say how you police in Nashville is, is how you police in West Nashville and how you police in Southeast, and it's, and it's totally different. But um, I just want to be just, just straightforward with you that, that, that some, some in this body, uh, believe that um, your position on on the COB doesn't foster a spirit of collaboration with the work that the COB is actually trying to do. So if you can if you can mm -hmm. speak to that, I would like I would like to uh, go in reverse with that. I would never be bold enough to to tell someone in uh, Bellevue that I would understand their plight. Um, and then two, I would like to say I was nominated by an organization. And to get that nomination, we went through a democratic process. So you all are elected officials, but I'm also here representing an organization who chose me to be here. So I'm also accountable to those folks. And usually my position and where I stand at is a reflection of those folks' experience. Um, we probably have uh, upward of a thousand black folks that are in our base. And so when we come to have like conversations around where we stand, there's an acknowledgement that the police have been used in a way to make up for other things that our communities are lacking, right? We have seen an overinvestment into police and a crowding up of responsibility that MMPD has, right? And I've had countless conversations where it's to the point of we have a high expectation on what police officers are supposed to be doing. And what I'm saying is, is that housing, education, fresh food, transportation, create safe communities, not just police. That's why I stand there. And, and I just want to end too, what, what is the mission of the CLB? Um, like I said before, the CLB is a place where, and this is... Your, your terms. Yeah, yeah. yeah this we is we know term. what it is, but... but yeah, yeah, this is just, on, yeah, just speaking on. for me. Uh, what I said before is like, and I, and I hope to give it <laughs> as eloquently as I gave it earlier, I think the three things that the CLB is, is tasked with doing is, one, being a place where community members can explore their curiosities, right? Two, 
be an independent investigation body when community members have complained against MMPD because previously the Office of Police Accountability were the ones that were providing the uh, oversight. And we all know the hiccups there. Um, and then three, be a place where community members can literally be involved in the policies that they see in their communities every day. Any other questions? I'll Okay. Thank you. Um, so I appreciate having uh, um, multiple opinions on boards, and I think you know one of the nice things about this council is that we have so many different people from so many different backgrounds and religions, and you know ways of walks of life and all that. And so that's part of we learn from each other, and I think that's super important. I think um, the COB is in a position to work because there are parts of our community obviously that there is a large amount of distrust between the police and that community and I think that the COB is in a really unique position to change that um, through their um, the way that they work with the COB and the I mean the with the police department and with the way that they um, can educate like to your point of educating you know um, on policy and and showing that there that there is accountability and that there is um, you know all the things that you're wanting and if, if not here's what we're doing you know to fix those things um, I do want to go back to um, being able to be impartial um, because while I want I love that people have multiple even very differing opinions I think um, if someone was to come and want to be on, serve on the COB that thought that the police could do no wrong and that every single thing they do is absolutely right, no questions asked, that that's inappropriate. That's not a fair and impartial person to be on the board and I would not be for that. By the same token, it is bothersome to see the things that are on social media about abolishing the police and I understand wanting to invest in communities. To me, it's two separate things. I want to invest in sidewalks and community centers and education and, and all those things, affordable housing. That's, that's all very, very important. I'm not, I don't, we disagree on how to fund that. I don't think we need, you know, so it's, and it's okay to disagree. Um, one of the things that, that concerns me, and I'm not on Twitter, and I don't want to be on Twitter, <laughs> but one of the things that was sent to me, and it was because it was on my LP, you know, it was about LPRs, and so obviously that's one of my deals, um, was just speaking to impartial, was um, a poll that you put out asking if MNPD, if you, if do you want MNPD to have LPRs, or, or however you phrased it, and 79% of the people said yes, 11% of the people said no, and that tweet was deleted. I just if you can just explain how that is impartial. Okay, so first I want to talk about I'm, I, I don't know how long we've been talking about my social media, but I do want to mention that I haven't seen this happen before where people talk about their social media for so long, but I'm fine with answering your question. Um, when it comes to that piece right there, when it comes to the conversation around the license plate readers, I think it's indicative if we look at the 15 organizations who came out against the license plate readers. Um, and that's all I'm going that's all I'm gonna say about that. But I do want to talk to this piece of objectivity. Um, in my tenure at the community oversight board, I've worked with former judges. I've worked with former police officers, like I think the one in this room, uh, Officer Walter Holloway. I've worked with Judge Joe Brown. I've worked with uh, uh, Bob Cooper. And I've worked with a whole diverse group of people who all have different relationships to the police and may carry the ideas that police can't do no wrong, right? And even in that, we were able to build out the board in the way that's best for everyone, where anyone in the community can come and speak, have a conversation, be heard, and not only influence what police are doing, but also have a direct impact on the recommendations coming out of the community oversight board. So I think my ability to be able to do that with people that I've never met, that come from a diverse group of backgrounds, that have a diverse political leaning, that are part of different type of institutions, I think that that is 
my record, and I'm like honored by that amount of work that I've been able to do. Why was the tweet deleted? Like I said before, I'm not speaking on my social media for that long. Um, the tweet was deleted because I chose to. And if you Thank also you. look at, like I said before, if you look at the other organizations, the NAACP, Connects and it's not about the actual church, um, and all the other other organizations who came out against subject it. Subject matter. That is just not my opinion about the LPRs. And I know and that's it, yeah. your thing, and I know that's your thing. But I'm like I said before, if you look at the organizations who came out against the LPRs, I think it's indicative. And of, I'm not talking about the subject matter of the LPR. My point is being objective. Yeah, and I and I explained it right. I think the people that I've been able to work with on the board that. Uh, have a diversity of backgrounds. Uh, if you ask any one of them of what it's been like, uh, I think that they would speak to my record as being objective. Any other questions? No. Council members? Yes, Council members. I just, I just want to ask, uh, uh, where'd you go to high school? I went to East Literature. <laughs> okay. East Nashville, High Now. I also graduated from TSU. <laughs> any other questions? All right, so we will vote on these individually. Now remember that I do want to remind people that we're not voting on whether you want any of these uh, candidates to be on the COB. What we're simply voting on here is that they meet the minimum qualifications uh, based on what we have. We have the extra added benefit of being able to interview them uh, separate and distinct from whether or not they qualify for this position. So we're going to vote on whether or not uh, Jamel Campbell Gooch now is qualified. So uh, I'll take the vote. All in favor, uh, raise your hands. Anybody opposed? So unanimously, thank you, Mr. Well, I'll just say Jamel. Thank, thank you very you much. And you're forwarded to the floor for a vote. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Russ. Now we're going to take uh, Mr. Walter Holloway. How are you doing, Mr. Holloway? No, I'm just fine. A couple of questions, and uh, first question would be, are you a Davidson County resident and registered voter? Yes. And do you serve on any other metro boards or commissions? No. And uh, how in the world did you come to get the attention of Council Lady Hurt for this uh, <laughs> nomination here? Well, she's an outstanding leader in our community. And yes, she, she is. <laughs> well respected. Very much. Mm -hmm. I knew her from, really I knew her from college. <laughs> and it's been a long time, but I seen her advanced in society, you know, and uh, she is a friend of mine. You know, when I first met her, well, she was giving a speech, and her speech was a very few words. She got up on stage, she was running for at large. She says, I'm Sharon Hurt. Vote for me or you will be hurt. <laughs> I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, sorry about that diversion here. So uh, uh, anybody have any, I will go ahead and start. I'm going to go back to that very same question uh, of objectivity. And, uh, you know, I think it's fair to ask everybody that question. Uh, it's very important that you be an objective member of the uh, Community Oversight Board, and I would like to uh, hear you address that position yourself. Uh, yes, I can. I believe be, you're uh, a former police officer, are you not? Yes. Um, yeah, so that's the other side of the fence is how, uh, how can a former law enforcement officer be a part of this uh, equation and police their own? Right is right and wrong is wrong. And uh, I've gone through the experience of being a police officer for 30 some years. And so uh, I've seen a lot of things that have gone on in society and stuff like that. And uh, people that have known me from working in the community know that uh, I am a true and honest person and I will do my best to help anybody. It doesn't make any difference, your race or whatever. I'm gonna do my job to the best of my ability. And being on this board is allowed me the opportunity to voice opinion of people who do not have a voice. And we got people out there who want to listen ear, want to hear a civilian opinion about different things that go on in society. Um, 
you think you could fairly and objectively look at a complaint uh, that involves someone that you may have worked with on the police department? Yes, I can. All right. Can you convince us uh, a little better than that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I look. I look at the facts on on, on, on different situations. You know, mm -hmm. what has taken place. Mm -hmm. uh, what could have been done, what should have been done, what actually happened. Mm -hmm. And I've gone through a lot of things myself, and uh, I don't believe in sugarcoating anything. Mm -hmm. I believe in the facts. The proof is in the pudding. Mm -hmm. And so I believe in dealing with the facts. All right. Thank you, sir. Anybody else have questions for Mr. Holloway? Uh, Councilmember Evans? Oh, I was just going to ask the same question I asked Mr. Gooch about, um, you know, uh, as far as your your interest in this. I assume you have no social media accounts that we should have probably looked at or anything. Um, maybe I'm wrong about that, but um, you know, what do you what do you hope to keep working on, really related to you know your time being appointed to the COB? Yes, like I said, I'm retired and. Um, it give me the opportunity to work basically with the board, the community, and the police department. I understand how the police department works. And I can give the, a matter of fact, when I was on the board, uh, when it first started, I was able to give them ideas how the police department was going to operate and how they were going to deal with them because we were a new source. Police department don't like changes now. But it's a way you got to communicate with them. And we ran some stumbling blocks. But folks don't, they don't realize how we came to become a mutual understanding. I met with the mayor, I saw the mayor at a, at a, at a gala. And I said, Mr. Mayor, <coughs> for this thing to work now, we're going to have to, you're going to have to bless this, get every, all the group together so we can communicate have an open mind, open law, open dialogue, so we can work together and do what the community voted on. <coughs> Councilmember Virtue. That was going to be my my question about social media presence. Any any disparaging r r remarks? And I, and I go back to what I stated earlier, with us being elected officials and with us appointing, uh, well, recommending you to be nominated for uh, confirmation to the board. We we have an accountability to to the voters, so we're extending that that same accountability uh, to you too. That's what that's what I vote. Um, essentially is and Councilwoman Evans, I think she said I think you shook your head no you didn't have no 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 social media presence um, uh, I, I, ideally in, in a perfect world the, a, a COB member is is to is to be that bridge between the police and and the community while supporting also uh, the mission and the, and the objectives of the, the executive director. And I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm really preaching to the choir, but this is really for, for the viewing audience. This board is really such a, a critical board uh, for, for the entire city of, of Nashville, giving um, some things that, that's, that has happened and um, just given the dynamic of the city and, and, and resources and under-resourced communities for those, those things that may happen, may happen in the future. But a good, strong, solid, objective uh, CO board, COB member, such as yourself, that comes in with a mature perspective, right? You've, you've, you've lived, you've lived in, in Nashville a long time. You, you, you've served the community for a long time. And I think um, that's really what's needed on, on this COB board uh, to take us to that next level of continuing to, to cultivate a sense of confidence in this board and also um, that, that trust as well uh, as it relates to our public safety sector. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, again, I'll remind, oh, yes, Councilmember. I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. Yes, ma'am. Um, first of all, um, I thank Mr. Holloway for being here and for his willingness to volunteer. Uh, as you can tell, Mr. Holloway is a professional. And he spoke about being 
my friend and being honest and speaking truth. What I think that Mr. Holloway brings is the balance that we must have, the different perspectives. He talked about being a police officer for 37 years, but he's been black all of his life. So he understands on both sides of what it takes and how one will look at it, and he can bring the type of objectivity that we seek. But he also brings wisdom, and he is unafraid to be able to speak the truth that must be told in order for things to improve. Because we must have that type of improvement and that type of consistency and institutional knowledge in order for this COB to be effective. I agree. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay. All right, we're ready to take the vote. And again, I'll remind everyone we're just voting simply on qualifications, not whether or not this is your choice. <coughs> uh, all in favor of Mr. Walter Holloway? Any opposed? All right. Thank you, Mr. Holloway. You're recommended. Uh, Mr. Michael Milliner? Yes, that is correct. Did I pronounce that correctly? You, you, you got it right. Thank okay, you so good. much. It's in the dictionary. Look at that. What's that? <laughs> uh, Mr. Milliner was uh, nominated by NAACP Nashville Branch, uh, another community organization uh, nominee. So I'll ask you, uh, are you Davidson County resident and a registered voter? I am. Uh, do you serve on any other metro boards or commissions? I do not. All right. Uh, so uh, I'll just start with the same question I asked everybody else. You know, question 45 deals with objectivity. And uh, I just want to ask you about uh, how you, do you feel like you can objectively evaluate uh, what it is a COB is there to do? Absolutely. I, I feel as if it's kind of in my vocational DNA to do that. I've been a public servant all of my life. I've, mm -hmm. I've worked for cities and, and states and counties and things of that sort. Been a procurement officer and done contracting and things of that sort. Also been a labor leader and, and, and uh, have worked on behalf of the rights of working men and women and, and uh, for many years as well as the civil rights uh, participant not only here in Nashville with the NAACP in uh, denominational ministerial fellowship uh, as a member of the Omega Psi Phi fraternity incorporated and on and on and on uh, so you know yes absolutely uh, those things have given me more of a terms and conditions regulatory rules uh, statutory kind of perspective on things and I think I bring I would bring that definitely wherever I go I think you just cost yourself a vote by touting a competing uh, fraternity. Uh, I do it all the time. You got to deal with that when you're the best. Uh, yeah, that's true. Well, I only said not the first. I'm sorry, it wasn't a question. <laughs> I knew I was going to start somewhere. All right. You did. Uh, anybody have any questions for Mr. Milliner? All right, any comments? Uh, Councilman, I'm <laughs> sorry. Just the same. Any social media, disparaging. Is, is there anything that you have out there that would, that, that would uh, catch council members off guard? I think you heard all my other yeah. statements from, from the other uh, potential potential nominees. Because what happens is yeah. when, 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 when certain things are, are, are stated about um, whomever is in leadership, whether that's the, the ED or the COB or, or, or the chief or the sergeant or the mayor, we, 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 we get, the, we get the, the brunt of that. So um, that's all I have. Yeah, I would think that if, if you were one of my seven children, it may seem disparaging. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, I try to be very careful about, my, about that kind of thing. Any other questions or comments? All right, we'll take the vote. And again, uh, another reminder, we're just voting on qualifications, not whether or not he is your choice. Yeah, well, thank you for being here, too. Well, my pleasure. Thank you, yeah. What's yeah. that? We ain't thank him for being here. And, then, and then for oh, the yeah. record, I, I'd like to just think, <laughs> and for the record, I'd like to thank Madam President Cheryl Glenn and her executive mm -hmm. committee for, oh, for nominating. Yeah. Uh, and really, yeah, yeah, sure. Right. All right. I take thank it as a privilege. Awesome. Thank you. All right, all in favor of Mr. Michael Milliner's? All right. Nobody opposed? 
uh, we certainly recommend you to the floor. Thank you very much Thank for being here. Thank you very much. Appreciate the consideration. Uh, now, Ms. Maxine Spencer, nominated by Workers Dignity. Hello. How are you, Ms. Spencer? Good to see you. It's great to be last, right? You get to see me last. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You already know how you're going to answer, don't you? <laughs> No, I, maybe I'll have some other questions. Well, no, 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 no. You like being last? You like, no, nah, I'm not gonna say that. But they say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right, I'll uh, I'll ask you like we did everybody else. Uh, are you a Davidson County resident, registered register voter? Yes. And do you serve on any other metro boards or commissions? No, I do not. All right, thank you. And I'll just start off by asking the same question to everybody else. Uh, <laughs> relative to question 45 and your objectivity, do you believe like you do you believe that you could fairly and objectively evaluate uh, the matters that come before the community oversight board? Yes, I do. And I do think that because from ever since like I've graduated college, that's mainly what I've been able to do is to achieve group consensus and make that a focal point of my work. From being a student activist um, to working at uh, the Oasis Center with just us, and and kind of it's still a serious note, but then also one that's a bit more familiar. Have you ever tried to like have a group of twelve high schoolers form consensus? <laughs> it is difficult, but it's beautiful work. And I think as it pertains to the mission of the COB and to really hit on the point of community in there. It's difficult, but it's beautiful work because we all have to come together to be able to be really radically honest and commit to doing that work. And then also on like another more familiar note, I did get my BA in philosophy at Vanderbilt. So oh, I did notice that. Yeah, uh, Vanderbilt graduate. Uh, yeah, very nice, very nice. I lasted a semester there. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. That's right. <laughs> All right. Will anybody uh, have any questions for Ms. Spencer? Councilmember Virtue? Mr. Sang, yeah. yeah. She heard it, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really make my own content on social media. I mainly would just follow and re repost things at most, but I don't, I don't have the energy to make things. I thought you were going to say you had somebody do it for you, and I was going to ask you if you could send them my way, too. So. <laughs> um, She's not even them. on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, there's so, I am on Facebook. I we, mean, we just like, send it to Facebook us. is for old people, apparently, now. I'm like, well, okay. I don't, I don't even make statuses anymore, really. I just, I just like and scroll because it takes too much time out of my day. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, any other questions or comments? All right, we'll take the vote. All in favor of Ms. Spencer? Okay, thank you very much. You, uh, you're recommended to the floor. Uh, and this, uh, thank you for coming. This concludes our COB uh, nominees, and now we will move to board appointments. And uh, let's see, maybe we'll have, are they going to come in? All right. Uh, looks like we can already start rolling here because I see the first one. Uh, the Con Convention Center Authority appointment of Ms. Tracy Harden for a term expiring January 6, 2026. I think I see Ms. Harden sitting here. How are you? I'm Good doing to well. See you. How are you? All right. Doing well. I've got a, a couple of questions. I think you've heard these before. Um, uh, are you a Davidson County resident and registered voter? I am. And do you serve on any other metro boards or commissions? No, I don't. And uh, please tell us why you want to serve in this capacity. Um, the, first of all, Convention Center is very special to me. Um, my company, can you hear me through this mask? We can. Go ahead. I know, we can. <laughs> please do. Feel free. I, I sound muffled. Um, so my company actually, Don Harden Group, which my husband and I own, in relationship to, we had a, uh, we had, um, a partnership with Bell Clark and Harmony. We built the convention center, so I'm very, very familiar with the facility, um, everything that went into the facility. So the opportunity to, to serve on a board that actually manages that facility um, is very attractive to me. All right. Anybody have any questions for Ms. Harden? Any comments? All right. 
Well, uh, let's go ahead and uh, take the vote. All in favor of Ms. Uh, recommending Ms. Harden to the floor? All right. Thank you very much for being here and uh, appreciate your willingness to serve. All right. Next is a Convention Center uh, Authority appointment of Ms. D. Patel for a term expiring January 6, 2026. Uh, how are you doing, Ms. Patel? I am great. How are you? Awesome. Uh, are you a Davidson County resident and registered voter? Yes. And do you serve on any other Metro boards or commissions? I do not. And feel free to tell us uh, why it is that you want to serve in this capacity. Absolutely. So my role is Managing Director at the Hermitage Hotel. I've been mm -hmm. at the property for almost two decades and so just have a deep love for tourism, hospitality, um, a deep commitment to the city of Nashville and, and those values all align with the Music City Center. Um, and, and so I'm looking forward to serving in a capacity that I can be of help and influence. And um, yeah, excited to, to work alongside with some great business leaders and stellar citizens. All right, thank you very much. Anybody got any questions, comments? All right. Is uh, the Oak Room still there, bar? Or did they? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't ask me about the Men's Room. I can't find out. Well, I mean, I know you have this amazing renovation, and I can't wait to go to the restaurant and all that, but I'm like, is the Oak Room still there? It's I know the bathroom. There. The boys' bathroom is still Or men's bathroom, I'm sorry. It's still yes. there. But, okay, so it's still there. Okay. It's still there. You've got to see it. It's preserved. It's historically preserved. It's now Druzy and Dar. Because it was so cool. Okay. And we have a sorry. competing room. Sorry. room. Nothing to do with anything. No, but. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor of Ms. Patel's appointment? Uh, nobody in favor. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate your willingness to serve. Yeah. Now we'll move to Convention Center Authority appointment of Ms. Betty, uh, Betsy Willis. Oh, I think that's Betsy Wills for a term expiring February 7th. Is that right? Yes, it is. Okay. All right, uh, Ms. Wills, do you, are you a Davidson County resident and registered voter? I am. And do you serve on any other Metro boards or commissions? I do not. All right, well, just tell us uh, briefly, if you would, why uh, you're interested in serving this capacity. Well, I can just say I'm a native Nashvilleian um, many generations back. I love this city so much, and I am so excited to uh, promote it in any way possible. I think the role of the Convention Center um, is just, uh, you know, it's, a, it's the star in the crown for downtown, and I can't wait to um, contribute my background and my knowledge to uh, whatever capacity that the board needs. So. All right. Any other questions for Ms. Wills? Any comments? All right. We'll go ahead and take the vote. All in favor? All right. You are recommended the floor. Thank you very much, and we appreciate your willingness to serve. Now we have the Historical Commission appointment of Ms. Laura. Alderman Roast for a term expiring January 29, 2026. I don't know. Somebody was pointing like she was here, so uh, I think she is. I know that's her. How are you, Laura? Oh, God, how are you doing? Are you? Doing very well. You. All right, we'll. Uh, this is uh, the historical appointment of Miss uh, Laura Alderman Rose for a term expiring um, January 29, 2026. So I'll ask you a couple questions. Are you a Davidson County resident and registered voter? I am. And do you serve on any other Metro boards or commissions? No. All right, so would you like to just share with us why you're interested in serving in this capacity? Well, I, in fact, I had to email and ask if this counted as a reappointment or a new appointment um, because I actually had been on the commission um, in the early 2000s, may, appointed by Mayor Bredesen. But anyway, all that to say, I worked at the Historical Commission. I did an internship in high school and in college, then practiced law for a little bit, then came back to preservation and worked for the Historical Commission, quit when I had a baby, was appointed to the commission, quit so that I could take a staff position again and then uh, have been on the foundation ever since. So this is all, this is all just part of the grand plan <laughs> to, to live my life with the Historical Commission. Um, but I've just always respected what they do, whether I've been a part of it or as an outsider. I just think a whole lot of the commission and its mission. All right. Any other questions or comments for uh, Ms. Roast? All right, well, let's go ahead and take the vote. All in favor of her appointment? 
All right, you're recommended the floor. Thank you so much. Thank Good you. to see you again. Thank you. All right. Next, we'll move to the Historical Commission appointment of Mr. Don Cusick for a term expiring February 3rd, 2026. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Good. Uh, well, I'll ask you the same questions. Are you a Davidson County resident and registered voter? Yes. Do you serve on any other metro boards or commissions? No. And if you would just tell us briefly why you want to serve in this capacity. Well, it's what I do. Uh, <laughs> I teach about history. I write about history. And I've been on, uh, this is a reappointment, so I've been on this mm -hmm. uh, uh, commission before. And... Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a perfect life almost if you can just uh, work with history. All it's right. A, it's a good way to go. Any questions for uh, Mr. Cusick? Any comments? All right. Well, let's go ahead and take the vote. All in favor? All right. Uh, well, you are the, the Rules Committee recommended you to the floor. And thank you for coming and thank you for being willing to serve in this capacity. Uh, and I believe this concludes our meeting unless anyone else has any other business. Oh, oh do you yeah. need a we parking pass? Yes. 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 You, you need one? one? Thank you. All right. We are. Okay. Oh, yeah.